Today we're going to show you how we change the secondary fuel filter on our universal M30 diesel engine on our Catalina 30 sailboat. So for a little bit of backstory before we start, last time we were out sailing we were out in some bigger swell. We are using the engine to get us out of harbour, but as soon as we raised the jib we noticed that the engine started going like woo and revving up and down and then after about three cycles of that it just completely died. See how that I don't know. Luckily we had the jib up so we could keep sailing while we tried to diagnose what exactly was going on with our engine. We had just filled the diesel tank so we knew we weren't out of fuel. We checked the engine heat which was fine, we checked the oil which was fine and after that we decided to try starting it again. The engine started up just fine as if it were normal but as soon as we revved up again it did that same thing and it died. So that led us to believe that it was probably being starved of fuel, which likely meant that we had a clogged fuel filter, because when you rev the engine up it needs more diesel, and basically not enough diesel was getting through the filters to feed the engine. But at low revs it was completely fine because it could get enough diesel through. We are changing the secondary fuel filter on our M30 diesel engine. That is a fuel filter that we will be replacing today. First off, we don't want any of the diesel to go into the bilge. So we have a pad here, a container, which will hopefully catch any drips, it's kind of awkward, and a new fuel filter. Um, it's, it is a secondary filter, so there's another one back there, but we're just going to change this one first because it's easy to do on the fly and we're hoping this is the main problem. We laid a pad down to ensure that no diesel would spill into the bilge and ultimately end up in the ocean. Then we twisted off the old fuel filter and tried to catch as much diesel as we could in our little container. In this case we didn't need a filter wrench. I was able to twist the fuel filter off by hand after wiping the surface off with alcohol to remove the slippery diesel residue on it. Assuming it's lefty loosey. Yeah. But if you don't have a filter wrench you can also use a piece of tape to grip the filter or I've also seen people punch a screwdriver into the filter and give them more leverage. That method is a lot more messy though and it destroys the filter so ideally that's more of a last resort method. Oh not bad though. You want to make sure that the o-ring came off with the old filter because you don't want it to get stuck up there. And then secondly, you can take a little bit of diesel and you just want to grease the oil o-ring on the new one because if you don't do this when you spin it on, it could grab and kind of tear and you want it to sort of like slide and create a seal. So just a little bit around there and then we don't prime this or anything, we just put it straight on and then turn it until the o-ring touches just until it touches and then so it usually says on the filter this says I need to turn it an additional three quarters so it's so slippery okay yeah, I think that was about three quarters yeah if it's hand tight then that's enough. yeah it is a good sign that this is looking gunky I don't know when the last time this was changed. Um, we haven't changed it, so it's probably overdue. By putting a new fuel filter on, it introduces a lot of air into the system. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to bleed the lines of any air. So one of us is gonna go up and turn on our starter key because our starter key just um, initiates the fuel pump. So we'll get the fuel pump going, and then on this engine there are two bleed valves. One is at the fuel filter itself and the second is at the fuel injector. Normally you bleed the air at the first valve then move on to the second one. Jonas is going up there, he is going to turn on the switch. We weren't able to access the first valve so we made sure to bleed the second valve very well and it worked just fine. To bleed the air we removed the bolt in the bleed valve and turned on just the fuel pump. On our engine the fuel pump turns on when we turn the key. Okay, there's the air. We let it run until there was no more air coming out. So it'll start bubbling. We want it to be nice and clean. Like no air, no bubbles. This is a bit of a messy process, so make sure you have lots of stuff to catch the fuel when it comes out. Okay, so we bled the fuel through this valve here. 
took off the bolt, waited for all air to come out, and then it's, the fuel started like spurting without any air. Put that back in, turned off the fuel pump. And the next step is to try and start the engine. Start her up. When we started the engine, we let it idle for a while to work any residual air through the system before revving up again. We have success. The engine started. We let it idle for a few minutes just to make sure if there was any air left that it would work its way through. And then we revved it up a bit, just in neutral, got to get the RPMs up because that's what was happening when we, when the RPMs increased, the engine would like be starved of fuel and turn off. So yeah, the fuel filter seemed to work. It's running well. We just talked to our neighbor and they were saying they had a similar issue and it could be build up within the fuel tank as well. So that will be a project for the future. We're not gonna do that today because <laughs> it's running fine. And basically what probably happened is when we were out in the super choppy conditions, the fuel got all churned up, which also churned up the sediment or whatever's in there. And yeah, just clogged something. We hope this was helpful. We're definitely gonna need to check out our primary fuel filter as well as potentially even cleaning out our diesel tank just to really make sure that this situation doesn't happen in the future. But for now, replacing the secondary fuel filter fixed our immediate problem and we haven't had any issues since. We also haven't been out in super big swell though, so. We're definitely gonna be keeping an eye on it. Definitely recommend having spare fuel filters on board though. We bought two, we bought one to replace our old one and then now we also have a spare. So if this were to happen again, we have a spare filter and we can change it quite easily on the fly.